Hi there, me again, Michael, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So we're actually, for some reason, I've just decided every Wednesday for the next little while is going to be a Wordy Wednesday. We're not just going to do Wordy Wednesday every other Wednesday. I'm going to apologize. I'm not sure what happened. Some of the videos have had comments disabled. I'm going to go back in and re-enable them just to have the ability to have conversations in the comment section. So today we're going to discuss something uh, that might be difficult for some of us to deal with. Um, that's going to be aphasia uh, and mental health problems. So, I'm going to leave the reference documents in down below so you can see where I get some of my information from. Uh, unfortunately, after a stroke, <clears throat> specifically a stroke, because that's my frame of reference, um, there's a high potential of having post-stroke depression or post-stroke anxiety. Uh, so if you consider about 31% of those that have had their first time stroke have aphasia. Um, and it's still percent, uh, out of that 31%, it's still present about in 60% of that population uh, about 12 months after the uh, stroke. So I'm going to assume some of the numbers are relatively similar for other forms of brain injury, be it concussion, be it traumatic, what have you. I'll be honest, honestly, I don't know the numbers, but I'm just going to assume that it should be relatively the same. Now, um, this doesn't matter, is it expressive or receptive aphasia? So I have expressive aphasia, meaning I have difficulty getting my message out. <clears throat> um... For people that have uh, receptive aphasia, meaning they have difficulty getting the message in, I, I don't have numbers for that, and, and I don't can't speak to that specifically. Uh, also, for those of us that have anomia, meaning word finding and selection issues, um, I haven't found any documentation with that, but I will look into it, and I'm going to do a video just about anomia. And then the verbal apraxia, um, that's a neuromuscular um, misfiring of, of the uh, that's when it sounds like you stutter at times or at least I do uh, that's that's where you're having difficulty making the the brain make the muscles move appropriately so when you try to form the words or shape the words um, you have uh, verbal apraxia or what also might be known as apraxia of speech yeah have a communication deficit and try to do this for fun or as as as, as an outlet so Let's just discuss some of the mental health considerations of those of us that have a communication deficit that you're not born with. This isn't something that you've learned to adapt with over time, such as you happen to have, you're born with some form of communication deficit, be that um, something due to, due to Asperger's, due to autism, you have a stutter, uh, cleft palate. Like there's something that you're born with, so you're able to incorporate um, uh, accommodation strategies and, and, and improvisation strategies from a very early age. So I've got a friend of mine, um, actually I have two friends of mine, both have young, young ones that have been diagnosed uh, on, the, this, on the autism spectrum. So there is some... Um, There is some impetus uh, or some reasoning for myself and my girlfriend to go learn ASL because that might be one of the strategies their parents are going to use with their young people is to, for better communication, they're going to teach their young person ASL. So I might end up in a sign language class. Uh, so for people that start out at an early age with some form of communication deficit, you start out, <clears throat> that's kind of your normal. You you learn to improvise, adapt, overcome, persevere, and accommodate um, throughout your lifespan. But what if you're a fully formed adult and you're in your 30s, your 20s, your 40s, what have you, and all of a sudden you're hit with a communication deficit or communication disorder, such as in my case. Um, I had a stroke, um, and uh, the first three or four weeks after the stroke, were very difficult for me to even ask for, you know, peanut butter on toast, you know, um, everybody. So there's a high incidence of depression after a stroke. However, throw into that aphasia. 
the the percentage of those of us that have aphasia, um, you you were now at a significantly higher possibility uh, or potential of having major mental health problems because of a you've got the stroke, so your brain and your body aren't getting along so well, and you're trying to recover the ability to walk, use your hands, feed yourself, do buttons, shoes, socks, the showering, the bathing, the toileting, the things. That in of itself is arduous and difficult and and just something you never want to have to do. Now throw into that, due to no fault of your own, an inability to have an effective conversation in, in any direction, be that incoming, outgoing, or God forbid you have both. Like you, you, have, an, you have a complete, um, uh, the complete form of aphasia. The actual name of it escapes me. Maybe someone will be uh, nice enough to leave the comment in the comments down below what that is. Um, you have the form of aphasia that impacts both expressive um, and receptive information. So not only do I have difficulty getting my message out at times, I have difficulty receiving the messages from the world. So people that have, you're already in a 60% chance of having depression after a stroke. Well, throw on to that an additional 62 to 70% higher potential of having a major mental health issue, be that anxiety or depression uh, after your stroke, because now you've got a communication deficit such as aphasia. <clears throat> and then that's going to have spillover. Um, these things don't happen in isolation. It's not. It's not a vacuum. Uh, unfortunately, and I'm going to cover this in another video. Um, you know, stroke, uh, and then the communication deficits they're in. It's kind of like I mentioned before, a third-party disease. Um, no, not Munchausen by proxy, but your your communication deficits. Um, are now impacting the relationships around you. Um, people can worry about you. Like, are you going to be able to just go to your local grocer? Like, walk in and try to get milk, eggs, and bread. Okay? Now, try to do that after a stroke. Okay? Now, try to do that after a stroke with a communication deficit. Okay? And then throw in all the other extra yumminess, like sensory sensitivity disorders. Uh, throw in foot drop. Throw in mobility issues. Throw in, you know, whatever the case may be. So, people that have communication deficits, specifically we're talking about aphasia, they also report having difficulty accessing mental health services, intervention programs, and other support groups. And I've had this happen where you're dealing with someone in an official capacity and you try to start out the conversation with, hey, I just got to slow you down for like a good 30 seconds. I just got to tell you, I've got a communication deficit, so I'm going to need some help. And they, they just ignore you. Um, or they think you're trying to control the conversation. No, I'm just trying to let you know that I need help occasionally. Or um, I don't need help occasionally. Uh, I don't need you filling in my sentences. I don't need you trying to guess the words. Uh, I just need you to give me the time to let the information come in, roll around the thinker, and give me time to spit my answer out. Uh, or I'm going to need time because I know what I want to say. Um, so I'm going to need time to be able to let that come in and then give me time to get the answer out. So is it a matter of receiving the information and, you know, maybe you need the sentences broken down into, into, into smaller sentences with more simpler language? Um, you know, so there's a couple of strategies you can use there, but each strategy is individual to the individual. It's unique. What's going to work for me, for my aphasia, for my anomia, and, my, and when it shows up, the verbal apraxia is going to be different than someone else. So even though you and I may have had relatively the same stroke, and you and I may have relatively the same communication deficits, that's not to say what works for you will work for me um, when it comes to adapting our communication styles and adapting how we live our lives. Everyone is unique both in their stroke itself or other forms of brain injury, and everyone is unique uh, when it comes to dealing with the aftermath. Now, I lucked out. Um, I was graced uh, with a girlfriend that has a master's in English, 
and was taking her master's in counseling psychology. So I, I literally, sorry, I figuratively, because literally means written form, I figuratively had the perfect storm in her skills because she would assist me with practicing things. And, and there are times where my grammar may not be the best after my stroke and she can spell check and grammar check things, the things that like word won't pick up. So I'm, I'm have some definite benefits there. Um, another problem that people with aphasia, um, they may have a, um, a lower quality of life score. If you were to take a quality of life score assessment, um, you may score slightly lower. So because you have difficulty accessing social support, you might feel extremely self-conscious just hanging out with the friends you used to have, or they may feel self-conscious hanging around you because, you know, you forget people's names or you, it's not that you forget their name, you just can't spit it out, um, you know, or you get confused during the conversations or, you know, the comment you wanted to make was so three and a half minutes ago, but it's taken you that long to spit your portion of that conversation out. So people that have aphasia, um, uh, and again, which direction that aphasia goes in is it's irrelevant. People that have aphasia, there are noticeable gaps between people that do not have aphasia with their stroke because not every stroke, not every brain injury is going to include a communication deficit. Not every stroke, not every brain injury will include aphasia. Uh, not every stroke, not every brain injury will that aphasia be present, you know, six months, 12 months, 24 months. Uh, initially after mine, it was bad. Uh, I would have moments where it would take me minutes to effectively engage in a conversation. Now, it's gotten better. I still have my moments, but that's that's not to say that I, I don't have moments where I'm completely fluid, I have no problems, I'm able to participate in the conversation, and then there are times where it gets difficult. And I've just learned to accept the fact it's going to happen. It's not my fault, it's a thing, and it's a thing that I have to live with. There's not much I can do about that. So just leave in the comments down below how aphasia might have impacted you, because just because you have aphasia... You might have some reluctance to go out and do some of the things you used to do. Uh, you might have some hesitancy to do some of the things you used to do. But the important thing is to get back to those things. Because if the people, places, and spaces are important to you, um, they're going to be accommodating. And sure, they're going to make jokes with you uh, about your speech. My friends still do it to me. Um, and it's just some of that morbid friendly camaraderie. Uh, again, as long as it's not being abusive or hurtful or vexatious or unwelcome, nothing wrong with it. And again, and as long as it's between friends and there's that mutual understanding, because Lord knows I make the stroke joke or speech joke. Something to say, buddy? So on that note, if you happen to know someone that is dealing with a communication deficit or communication disorder after a stroke, a brain injury, a concussion, what have you, please point the channel up to them. They might get some benefit out of the content I'm generating just on Wordy Wednesdays. Um, and then if you know someone that is either going through the recovery from a stroke or a brain injury or someone supporting someone going through uh, the recovery from a stroke or a brain injury, again, please point the channel up to them. Get them to like, share, subscribe. They may get some benefit out of the content I generate. And if you happen to see someone either either in yourself or someone around you, someone that appears immediately befuddled or confused, someone who has uh, um, lost their sense of balance, someone has vision problems, they can't see out of one eye, they only see in grayscale, they see a little dot in the world, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction, someone who has um, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate speech for situation or context, or you notice you can't understand speech, um, someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all, someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all, someone who has the inability to stand unaided, has general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.